Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting episode 18 in our Catacomb series, uh, where we try to take you on some deep dive tutorials with specific D2R edits. And today's topic is going to be all about colors. Uh, so item colors, monster colors, state colors, um, basically how to change it all and uh, some of the options we have. So as usual, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe. And don't be afraid to check out that video description uh, below for all the uh, links and stuff you might want to use. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, do as usual and jump right into all the files we'll need to get started. Uh, so we're going to start out by just grabbing some of the text files that we're going to need to understand everything. Now, for that, we're just going to go ahead and pull out armor.txt as one example, monstats.txt for monsters, and states.txt to show you how this uh, is controlled with states. Um, so between that, you'll understand how items, monsters, and kind of special states all behave with colors. Um, another file we need for, um, again, making sense of things is going to be data global UI layouts. And we're going to go ahead and pull out global data HD. Um, as usual, I've already kind of done all that here. Um, that's going to help again. This is mainly used for items. Um, and we'll go through each one individually. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and pull out data HD global palette. And we're going to pull out all three of these and run through them pretty quickly for you guys. Uh, and this will help you control items, monsters, uh, you know, all the colors that are used for those. So with all those out, we're ready to jump right into the meat of it um, and basically just start opening everything up and explaining it all. Um, so we're going to start out with items because um, those are kind of separate from monsters, obviously. And so we'll uh, just tackle those first to, to knock those out of the way. Um, so the first thing we need to do is just understand that each different item has different uh, what they would base palettes that they use for their colors. Um, obviously, something uh, leather is not going to look the same palette wise as like a, a splint male. Um, they just have different ones, more blue, ones more red palette wise. Anyways, um, because of that, if we scroll all the way over, um, we're going to have an inventory trans column. Let me go and lock these up here. Um, we can see that uh, this is the column we care about for now. And we can see that most of these starting out have an inventory trans of eight. We got some fives, some twos. Um, that is the base palette that they're using. Um, so uh, with that in mind, um, we're going to go ahead and remember just two, five, eight, and then we're going to go ahead and switch gears a little bit and open up our layouts file. So data, global, UI layouts, and let's open up global data HD. And the first thing I want you to look at is um, this section here. This is our sprite coloring helper section. Um, and if we count these up, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are those specific uh, inventory trans columns it's using. Again, our two, five, and eight. Um, that is, these are the color ranges uh, those are using. Um, so the reason I'm showing you this is maybe you think uh, that this particular palette uh, doesn't handle color transforms well. Like you change it to green or red or blue or something on the item and it just looks like junk. Um, you might want to uh, expand the saturation amount or change the specific value or hue that it's using to allow it a greater range of colors. Maybe that's what you're trying to accomplish uh, is you know essentially changing the base palette. Um, just a real quick digression. Um, this is where you would change the individual sprite colorings for the specific um, inventory view uh, of the different color you know, combinations. Um, and then this is where you do it for special items. Um, so sometimes you'll be trying to color uh, a certain um, sprite um, and it just like does not take the dark gold color for some reason or whatever. Um, it's because it's going to be controlled here um, and it has special uh, settings for that. So anyways, just I digress, uh, you know, you probably won't need to edit that nearly as much. So we're going to assume that you understand now, just again, uh, every item has an inventory trans entry and that inventory trans entry correlates to this global data HD file, um, which will contain the color ranges and stuff that are typically associated with that base palette. Um, once we understand the base palette, we can take it a step further and we can go into data HD, 
global palette, and we can open up item transforms.json. I'm going to go ahead and format that giant mesh real quick, and we're going to go ahead and just take a look through this. So um, within each kind of table, um, we can see the individual color transformations. Um, so again, if you had um, something like a frost in it, you know, applied like that crystal blue, uh, you know, coloring to the item. Um, this is where all that kind of stuff is defined. Um, so this is what the black uh, is defined as, you know, color wise. This is what light blue is, etc. cetera. Um, and then uh, that is for each palette type. Uh, so again, if you remember, we use palettes two, five, and eight. And if we uh, just go back to Global Data HD real quick, we can see that, for example, for CAP that used eight, it's actually using uh, inventory gray-brown. Um, so we're going to scroll down quite a bit here, and we're going to look for that gray-brown. So now we can see we're in that gray-brown class. Let me move up some. So here's our gray-brown table. Um, so if we're trying to edit uh, specifically how light gray looks, but only on the base palette of gray-brown, then this is where you can edit that. Um, I will explain how all these uh, values work in just a minute here. But again, we're just, we first need to understand how the palette system works um, because it'll affect um, where you want to change and what the final outcome is going to look like. Um, so tie it all together real quick. I'm sorry if I'm you know, boring you guys to death, but we look at the text file to find what inventory transit uses. If we're not happy with just that base palette, you know, as a whole, um, then we can adjust things here. If we just want to make some fine tuning on like a specific color on that palette, then we can come into the item transforms, uh, go to that specific base palette, and then find the exact color we're not happy with. Uh, like, oh no, I think the light red looks like, you know, crud, let's change that a little bit. Um, now, as far as changing the actual values, I'm actually just going to jump paces to monsters real quick, uh, do it on monsters, um, because it all works the same, and then I'll show all this working in the game and stuff. Um, so again, that's how all the items link together. Um, now let's switch gears a little bit and uh, take a look at monsters. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just pop up monstats.txt, and the only column we care about for uh, this video is going to be our trans level column. Um, so very similarly to the, um, you know, the uh, armor.txt entry, sorry, um, so our inventory trans column, this is basically working the same, but for the monsters. So for zombie one, which we'll go ahead and use for our example today, um, it's uh, using a trans level of zero. Um, so that's important for just a couple reasons. Um, I'm going to open up the zombie JSON file so we can take a look at some things. Um, so the first thing uh, I want to point out for this um, is just that every uh, kind of character JSON, enemy JSON, whatever, um, is going to have this section here, uh, a variant definition component. Um, a variant file is how it controls the different color shades, um, you know, when you're using the same monster models and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so instead of, you know, a new model for every color, they just shade it with this variant file, um, and then you, you, you know, get your results from that. Um, so I bring this up because if you're cloning monsters and maybe you want some different, uh, different monsters to have different shades, but uh, you're running at a trans levels or something like that, um, you can always just make this go to somewhere new. So, hey, I'm making a new, you know, uh, zombie one clone file, um, and then point your like custom monster to that instead um, so that you can keep them separated and have more options. Um, but other than that, all we need to know is that this is the location of the actual file that we want to edit. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, you know, side tangent there, but just wanted to make that clear. Um, so now we're going to go into that folder and open up the actual variant file. And what we care about, because that uh, monster we're trying to edit is a trans level zero, um, is actually this right here. Um, for, you know, this file, it's about a, I don't know, a quarter of the way down or something. Um, we have name level zero, uh, which again directly correlates to trans level zero in this file. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see level one. Uh, once more, that is level one in, you know, the text file. Um, so we want to change how uh, the default um, zombie looks. Um, and for some reason, we want to just make it like all white. Like it's just blatantly obvious, like we've changed the color. 
I'm going to change this color adjustment field to zero. Um, this, whoops, uh, helps if you push the right button there, Geek. Um, so uh, we're going to change it to zero, and that essentially just forces it to be the bright white. Um, if we leave it as one, um, but don't apply any kind of color tints or anything, it just uses the base layer. It's like a it's like a mask basically. Um, so this is your color adjustment is more like your mask area. You can use negative values to do things like decrease the overall brightness of that. Um, but I like to think of this as like your your base layer or your base coat on the wall you're painting. Um, so if you want, uh, you know, your wall to have the brightest, best colors, um, you know, you, you coat it white first uh, so that your blue pops out that much better. Um, this is kind of that same thing. Um, we're setting it to zero so that it's like pure white. Um, and we're doing that for the mask. Uh, now you'll notice that there's three sections within this level zero. So we have red zero, uh, red, blah, 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 green, blah, 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 and blue. Uh, that is for each individual channel. Um, so we can adjust things like uh, specifically by the channel um, within uh, each section. Um, so for us, we're going to keep it simple. Um, honestly, I've never even had to mess with hue or saturation yet. Um, don't know if Blizzard does either. I haven't looked that closely into it. Um, I've been able to accomplish every shade and color I could want with the method I'll show you. Um, but feel free to mess around with hue or saturation. Um, you know, maybe they do something I'm not aware of. Anyways, um, this first section is going to be, a, again, our kind of mask section. And our color tint section is going to be where we actually change things. Um, for this example, we're going to do something special for a state. So for the base level, we're just going to change everything to zero for all three color channels. So again, this should mean that um, when we first see the zombie, it's just going to be like a blinding bright white um, because that's what we just told it to use. Um, now we want to also have a special color um, when uh, a state is applied on monsters. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up states.txt, and we're going to assume that we're running a Paladin, I don't know, Holy Freeze or something, just because it's an easy one to show an example of. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll over on this uh, Holy Wind Cold for the effect that they get, uh, the enemies get under Holy Freeze. Um, and we can see here, uh, if I revert it back to normal and act like I never changed that before, um, that uh, under the color shift column, it has a value of 108. Um, now, if we look up in the uh, Blizzard data guide and we go check out this color shift column, we can see that uh, 108 means it changes the color to blue. So obviously that makes sense for Holy Freeze, it changes the enemy blue. Um, the only ones currently in the game uh, in D2R that I know of um, are changing them to blue, uh, changing them to green for poison, uh, and then uh, color to gray um, for revives. Um, all the rest uh, that were enabled in Legacy just kind of aren't in Resurrected. You'll just have to add them yourself. Um, at least the nice thing is, is you're not restricted to those numbers or any numbers really. Um, so we're going to change this color shift to 69 just because, you know, that's a great number. And again, if you look in the, um, you know, Blizzard data guide, that's not like a valid entry. Like that's just, you know, goes from 49 to 73, like there is no 69. Um, in D2R, again, it's just not quite like that. So again, we're just going to use 69, just roll with me, and we're going to just say that's our only change. Um, you can change the RGB aura uh, lighting it emits, um, but again, we're just going for quick examples here. Um, we're going to change to 69, save it, and now we're going to go to our final file, back to the palette, HD global palette, and we're going to open up our standard transforms.json. Um, so you'll notice it starts with 000. Um, however, this file directly translates to uh, what is in the um, color shift. Um, so these are your color shift IDs. Um, so when I'm looking for 69, because it starts at zero, I actually want to look for 68. Um, so I'm going to scroll all the way down here to 68. And you can rename this, by the way. So you can just, uh, you know, rename all these ones. It actually works on the entry count, not the actual name. Um, so these are basically just comments. Um, so you can change it to 69 so that it now matches the text and, like, always works.
you know, will in the future or whatever. Um, but uh, this will be the actual section, whether we name it 68 or 69, uh, that controls this particular color shift uh, on this ID. So we want to do a couple things. Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and say we want it to be, uh, I don't know, something obnoxious like pink. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, like before, I'm going to change that value to zero instead of one because I want it to be a kind of full opacity. Um, I want that uh, color that we're going to uh, tint it to, to to be as uh, vibrant as possible. I don't want any of it kind of masked. Um, for the actual color, we're just going to you know type in Google color picker or whatever. Um, I pick just any kind of pink just an as an example. And here are the RGB values for that. Um, to convert them to this kind of JSON format, um, all we're going to do is just divide it by our max value here. Um, so I'm going to take a calculator. We're going to do one, which is the max value kind of thing of our JSON, uh, divided by the max value of our RGB. Uh, so divide by 255. And then we're going to multiply by the RGB value we want which is going to be 237. So our first JSON value for our red should be 929, uh, 0.929. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and pop that in real quick. So 929. We're going to do the same thing for 5 and 202. Um, if you want to make you know, yourself a Google Sheets, you know, little thing that does this automatically, obviously feel free. And so our second one is going to be 0.019. So uh, we're almost done. Sorry about this. And then finally, we're just going to do it for 202 real quick. So 1 divided by 255 times 202, 0.792. All right, so we got all our values here. And uh, for the last one, uh, I guess I should explain. I apologize. This basically is uh, red, green, blue, alpha uh, in these channels. Um, so this is uh, how it's changing each of the, the kind of color channels. And then again, you can do that within each um, for things like your variants and stuff uh, within each of the individual channels as well. Um, but uh, I digress. Uh, we want this color again to be kind of full vibrancy. So I'm going to change that from a zero to a one uh, because I want that to kind of just fully take effect. Um, so now that we've explained everything, I'm just going to quickly go back to the palettes. Um, this random transforms is for like uh, champions, uh, unique monsters that spawn. I believe it also uh, works for super uniques and their U trans columns. Um, but it's this, all the exact same stuff as what we've been doing. Uh, you got your color transform layer. Um, you set your adjustments and your tints and stuff based on the colors you want. So exact same stuff. Um, but if you wanted to fine tune how it looks on uh, again, the random spawning monsters and things like that when they get random effects. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start the uh, mod with all the changes. Thanks for listening and we ramble so long about uh, all the different color transformations and, and how they work. And uh, we're going to go make sure that two things happen. Um, one, that our zombies are pure white uh, normally. And then when they're affected by a holy freeze, they turn bright pink. Um, and so as long as those two things happen, um, then we've kind of showed all the changes and how that works. So let's see if we see a super bright white zombie, none yet. Of course, there's none nearby. It's going to make me look bad. There we go. So we have our super bright white zombies, because um, again, all we did was basically just turn the full opacity on. Uh, and now if we get closer, we should see them turn pink when they get frosted. So um, that is how you can kind of control all the colors um, for different things. Um, you know, use as many different color shift IDs as you want and kind of create your own stuff. Um, and you can do it with different settings. So just real quick, um, I'm going to just change one thing just to show you uh, how you can kind of fine tune that further. So obviously that was a pretty bright pink and stuff. Let's say you wanted it more subdued. Um, so now I'm going to turn like the full mask on. So now it's going to be very black and heavy. Uh, might actually be too black and heavy. Let me just try something like 0 0.8. Um, again, you can also do it for the individual channels. So you can have the blue channel with a higher mask than the red channel and further mix things up. Um, but again, we're just going to say that you're, uh, you're happy with messing around with it like that. Um, and we're going to take one more look now. And all I've did is change the global mask to something much darker. Um, so you should see the zombie have a much blacker look integrated uh, with that pink. Um, so that's how, again, you can further control things like 
uh, brightness, how much of the color is showing, um, so it doesn't have to look quite so obnoxious, uh, you know, if you don't want it to. So now if we look, you can see it's a much darker kind of pink. There's a lot more black mixed in with the pink, um, so it's just not quite as bright anymore. Um, so that's just kind of a full demo on how you can change items, monsters, states, um, all with kind of full and precise RGB control um, thanks to uh, D2R and JSON. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of the day. Bye.